high. Um, I'm going to show you how to retip a cue. This one has got my blackspin ferrule, which is a different material to your, your normal brass. It's still very tough, but you need to be careful, um, as you do with brass. It's very easy to mark it or um, cut it, scrape it um, with a knife. Anyway, first thing to do, take a blade. Make sure it's a new one, a sharp one. Um, if you try to cut tips with blades that are not sharp, you're just going to be pulling them and give yourself problems. Anyway, I'm going to try and get this cue in a position where I can work on it. I'm going to lay it down on the table. You can't quite see this, but it's on the surface. Um, I'm going to lift it up so you can see. Let's see, let's just adjust this. Okay, there we go. Right, so it's on the surface. I'm going to get as close to the ferrule as I can. And then I'm going to allow the blade to slice it. And I'm going to turn it around a little bit, start again. What I don't want to do is cut all the way through on one side because I might well go into the top of the ferrule. And really, we want to be taking advantage of the fact that when cues are made or ferrules, uh, ferrules and tips are put on, they're generally faced off nice and flat with a lathe, so we want to take advantage of that. We don't want to be making trouble for ourselves. So I am going to take my time doing this and try to do it carefully because it makes life easier. You don't have to do it like on a surface if you don't want to. I'm sure you've all got, or well, you might have got your own technique over the years. I never used to do this when I was in the club playing. I just do it all in my hand, but I just want to show you a nice, easy way of doing it. Okay, so I'm cutting right through. Okay, so tips off. Let's see. Let's change the angle. So I've got some tips still on there. So taking my blade, I want to remove the the excess tip that's on there to get back to the ferrule material. Just Take your time with this. Don't try to take it all off in one go and, and use the sharpness of the blade to just slice that slice that leather away. And before you know it, you should be down to the you should clearly see the top of the ferrule and the nice flat area that you um that was there originally. I'm doing this really carefully. I would work do this much faster, and I used to do it in no time years ago in a club. But I want to want you to see that. Take your time. Let's come back up here now. Eh? Have a look at my face. Now, once you get it nearly gone, I'll do, let's see if I can show you. You see, we're nearly there. Now these black spin ferrules, and I want to say here, it's not just a black ferrule. There's a core inside this cue. Okay. But anyway, this has got a a plain black top. So if you can see in the picture, we're almost there. A little tiny bit of um a little bit of lever left. So I'm gonna just use the the tip of it and just try to just scrape away those bits. Okay? I don't want to be going cutting over the edge of the ferrule causing a, a sort of convex surface because you'll never get a tip to stick properly if you got that right so that's looking a bit like there's nothing really there just a thin layer of glue there we go. Well, I'm happy with that. I know that that's nearly right. Lift it up to the light, look along it, you can generally see. I'll then take a little bit of sandpaper. This, this is a 120 grit. It's a specialist paper, but any any would do really. Um, maybe something like 180 actually. This this 120 is not as um, abrasive as a 
as rough as a, a cheap 120 grit. Anyway, use my fingertip right in the centre of the tip. I'm going to hold pressure in the middle and sort of rotate the cue. So I'm just taking the last little bits off. And so the key really is don't sand around the edge of the ferrule. You don't want to do that. So the pressure is in the middle and try to make sure you're pushing down the middle and sort of work your way out, but don't put any pressure to the edge. Okay, got a nice flat surface now. Um, now, to avoid making a right mess, depends what glue you use, to avoid making a mess with super glues, which most people use, I'm going to take some masking tape and put it right up close to the tip. Just tear a bit off. See, I'll just put it right up close. Yeah. I'm going to use uh, super glue. I'm going to put one of these tips on. This is my new. I don't know if you can see this. My black spin tip that will be complementing the black spin corn ferrule. The beauty of this is, I don't know if you can see in the light, it's actually got a small bit of imprinted writing on the bottom there, which acts as a good sort of glue, sort of a key for the glue. Um, it's also flat, so you don't need to sand this. If you want to, very lightly, but this is flat. So make sure you blow the dust off. Dollop of glue. I'll try not to make a mess, but I expect, as I'm trying to show you something tidy, I'll pour it all down the side of the queue. <laughs> right, position it. Uh, by the way, I use a thick glue, which gives me time to move it a little bit. That's not the most central one I've put on, but it's over the side of both, it's all around the ferrule, so it'd be alright, I'd better cut it down. When I used to play in the clubs and change my tip, I would just stand there for, you know, a minute or something, pushing down. Um, but if you've got one of these, they're handy. Always make sure, if you use one of these, make sure these holes, there's no sharp bits, because you can scrape your, your shaft. So you go down holding this ring up, push down, pull it down, and there you go, put it to one side, you know, super glue, they tell, they go off quickly, so you can work them, you know, almost straight away, but if you can leave it for five minutes, it's always good, right, I'm not going to bother, because I know that's stuck, right, so I'm going to take this off now, because that, that just stopped me getting glue on the ferrule, but I will put it back again later, I think. If I need to sand the side of the tip, I'll try to do a nice tidy job. But sometimes you do need to get in there. Yeah, definitely not the straightest tip I've put on. That's the pressure of being on telly. Now, um, ah, I haven't got room. Let me turn around. I'm going to put this now. Ugh. I'm going to put this upside down. On a flat surface, I'll do it here. You can't see it. Mm, that's no good, is it? Let's adjust this now. Ah, here we go. You can see, yeah. Right, so again, sharp blade, a new blade. Don't waste your time with an old one. Pushing up, using the side of the ferrule as a guide. But take care not to dig into the ferrule, because you don't want to be scratching your ferrule, damaging it. Um, like I say, this material, this black material, is, is very tough. But you can, you can damage it if you're not careful. But exactly the same as brass. A number of times I've, I've sliced a bit of brass when I'm doing this. You know, so it's just a case of getting your technique right and avoiding damaging it. So use the side of the, the ferrule as your guide. And slice down... And as you slice down, just turn the cue. 
So you're following the line of the ferrule and getting that tip very close to your ferrule size. I tend to go around a couple of times because you often miss, miss bits, but I want to get this really as round as I can. I don't want to be sanding it away. I want to let that blade do my work for me so that really I've only got to do a light touch up at the end and just shape the top. Oh, that'll do. Okay. Um, by the way, if you want the mushroom tip, take care when you position your tip on. Um, make sure it's central all the way around and then it's just a case of just lightly sanding the sides down and the top. Uh, but anyway, this is this is a cut to size one. So, as you see, I think a little bit sort of pokey out where the blade's ridden up. But I'll deal with that. Two ways of dealing with it. You can either sand it. Adjust that back down again. You can either sand it, but you've got to be careful with your shaft here. Or what I do a lot is again take the blade, I will then work this way up where I've got more control and I can see. And again, using this, that side of the ferrule as a guide, I'm just shaping it more. And because the blade's so sharp, it's not pulling the lever. That's the important thing. My thumb is pushing down as well, so I'm holding the, the tip. I'm not just pulling up, which is, you know, it's going to tear the lever. So a very sharp blade and pressure on the top still bit like when it's turned upside down you know I'm pushing down on the surface whilst I'm cutting so that helps to not let the lever get pulled apart if that makes sense so anyway I'm, I'm going to end up messing this up because I'm talking and uh, my thumbs are quite my skin's quite tough now so this blade it may well cut you but it doesn't cut me <laughs> Okay. To be honest, nowadays, I rarely do them by hand. I sort of uh, most of the work is done in the lathe. It's, it's easier to shape and shape them and everything. But I just want to make sure you see. Now, I'm going to go back to the masking tape because I want to get the cue shaped up, but I don't want to sand the cue. So, the cue tip. Sorry, shaped. So I'm going to put a bit of. I'm just going to roll down the shaft a little bit just to, to make sure that any. any strokes don't go into the, into the shaft. Um, take a piece of sandpaper, try and create a. You see that? Sort of rounded bit so that you can sort of follow the shape and you come down strokes like this. So the masking tape's a good idea. Uh, most cues I get in for repair, they've been well butchered really. You know, the, the shafts are all worn in where it's been sanded. The ferrules are all scratched and scuffed and horrible. So, you know, it saves your cue. It's, it's recommended. So what, I've, what I'm doing here is I, I put the tip onto one side slightly and when I cut it I've left a, a bit of an angle so I'm taking that off first so I'm basically looking at a nice straight tip so every one of these strokes is down you sort of using the shape of my hand to keep it in, in um, keep it round <coughs> so <coughs> these tips are nicely shaped if you put it on nice and central you, you're virtually finished, you just need a slight touch up. I didn't put mine on central, so I've now got a high side. If you can see there. So I'm going to just quickly shape it. One other thing about these tips is when you see them, they look shiny and very, very hard, but in fact, they grip the chalk well. And as soon as you start sanding them, you, you sort of bring up the leather fibres a little bit and they really take the chalk lovely. Um, but because they're very hard, they're compressed quite hard, they're, uh, they're less likely to mushroom and more likely to play just right the moment you play a shot of it. 
you know, a lot of press tips are too soft uh, and take a while to bed in if at all sometimes they never do just poor bits of um poor bits of leather um I moved I actually I shouldn't have used that sandpaper that's the, the 120 that's too rough um see I'm talking that's that's what happens something like a 180 grit or 240 because otherwise you do start to tear the leather a little bit it starts to fluff out too much you don't want that and these tips are pretty much spot on you won't see a tip like these say when they arrive well actually I don't know maybe you will most tips I've used are not like these um, and these are made right here to my secret recipe we hand make them virtually pressing each one to get to just get them right a little bit of magic involved but anyway less of that this is just a re-tipping lesson okay so can you see it's pretty good I'll do some more up the side now I think because I've got a lighter grit now I know that I can afford to go up and down it a little bit I know that I can get away with that I wouldn't advise you to always try and keep down, but if if you know what, if you know sort of how strong your sandpaper is, and what your tips normally do when you go up and down, you can you can do what you want. Right, because this is masking tape, it should just peel off quite nicely. Bingo. So, I'll tell you what. That ain't bad. <laughs> um, so this, I only showed you this to help you not damage your cue. We don't do this at all. You know, I say I use a lathe mostly now, and I never used to do that. You don't have to do it. If you're careful, you can do it without. But if you look now, get my angles right, so you've got quite a reasonable shape on that tip. Is it focused? I don't know. It's quite good. I'm quite pleased with that. As a demonstration, while I was talking, I'm surprised I didn't make a right pig's ear of it. Yeah, that's not bad. I might touch it up a little bit more if I was playing with that, but I could go in it a ball now. And that would be perfect. Oh yeah, where's my chalk? Hold on. Mark on the ferrule, no damage to the ferrule. <laughs> Just scratch that. This is that. This is a dodgy bit of chalk. It's that light stuff. There we go. Get it in there. Load up the tip. Right. Anyway, there we go. So we've got a nice shape, undamaged. Close up. All done by hand. Oh, see that there? It's a little bit of that masking tape. That'll come off. There. Okay, tip done. Took me 20 minutes. Really, it's a five minute job when you know, you know, when you've done it a few times. Remember, sharp blade. Sharp blade. Try not, don't, ah, I forgot to say that. Don't mess about with these things, files. Don't put your file... Don't, the number of times I've seen someone with a file on top of their ferrule doing this. The only thing you'll do with this is make your uh, ferrule tip end convex. And you'll have problems sticking tips. Okay. Try to take advantage of the fact that your ferrule was flat when you bought it. So use a sharp blade to just cut away carefully the tip to reveal that flatness. And then a very light sand to, to give a little key for the glue that's all you need um, you can use these with a felt filing if you really must because you can hold it flat and you can just 
turn it slightly, but I don't recommend it. Okay, there you go. 20 minutes to put a tip on. Unbelievable. But that's how you do it without damaging your queue. I run out.